I am a Muppet. I am a Muppet beyond Muppets. Okay, like that just... Uh, I do all the recording. I get 20 minutes into it. I get I get all... All... I get I get so many things good. The matches were nice, you know. I'm I'm doing really good inside the Linus tier seven. I absolutely love for crying out loud. I even did the battle kiwi thing again. Come on, guys. I tried so hard. The freaking battle kiwi. Okay, and I kind of ran into a problem where I hit the second match and I was doing some things, and it turns out I never change a scene, so it was still stuck on the desktop for 12 minutes and here i am commentating over a match i'm having and i'm just like oh it's going so well and then i hit pause and i look back over and i'm all like oh, i done goofed which means that i have all this time that i invested and i pulled a muppet move but i mean you know what maybe it's a lot better so Today, we're going to be playing matches inside the Linus, and it's probably going to go a lot better. Honestly, it's not too much time, you know, lost. Um, it, it, it's actually be a lot cleaner, I hope. Fingers crossed. You know what? I mean, since we're doing this, let's do it right. Desktop view, guys. If you want to pick up the Linus in this tank, I absolutely love it. The fact is, I don't love it for just the price. 6900 Nice, right? Come on. Nice. Look at that. 6-9? No? A anybody? All right, whatever. Um, but 194 standard pin on a tier 7 is actually a decent amount of penetration, along with 250 heat penetration. However, these heat rounds, they are slow. I think it's like 660 or 600 on the dot. Uh, 220 alpha, 700 and 270 on the high explosive, which honestly, the 50 damage increase from the standard to the high explosive for me is a bit disappointing, but if you're using a three-shot autoloader, that does make a decent dif difference, I guess. I, you know, in the first match we're going to play inside the, on the Linus, we'll be using the three-shot autoloader. Uh, still concealment-wise, it's not exactly the most concealed heavy, but it's not the worst. Uh, 391 still concealment. If you guys want to try and boost this, I don't see a point. 370 view range, that is going to play against you. Fifth, um, 35 forward, however, compared to PC, they only get 30. So we're actually a bit faster over here in console. Not to mention 14.5 on our horsepower. While PC gets 14.5 on the dot as well, so not much of a disadvantage there. However, the reloads across the board... Uh, we're looking at 7.4 here on console, and PC is looking at 7.38. The disadvantage, though, PC can put a gun rammer on. Sadly, we cannot. Thing is, though, is that we have a lot of perks to benefit and actually give us a lot of bonuses, so I don't see too much of a problem there. 66 rounds of ammunition, and with the single shot that we currently have equipped, 0.38 accuracy, 2.5 aim time. With the autoloader, you're looking at 0.4 accuracy and 2.7 aim time. Um, respectively. And shells, yeah, 995 meters a second on your standard rounds, 600 across the board for your high explosives and your heat rounds, making the high explosives on this just a bit more disappointing because they're super slow. Their penetration is 44, which is decent at tier 7, but the damage, well, is there a benefit to that extra 50 damage? Uh, you guys let me know in the comments if you think this would be a bit beneficial. However, 1,400 hit points on a tier 7 that's not bad. This comparable to a medium tank inside of a tier 8. And, yeah. So, other than that, without further ado, and without further Muppet Ream, because I am... Uh, a Muppet. Like, without a doubt. Let's take a look at the crew. Let's take a look at the equipment. Let's see what, everything I have on this, and then jump into some matches. And, uh, fingers crossed that I'm not a super big Muppet. But I'm very, very close to it right now. So starting off, we're looking at Born Leader, Rapid Loading, Steady Aim, Snapshot, Clutch Braking, Off-Road Driving, Sixth Sense, Situational Awareness, Track Mechanic. Now, this is my Czechoslovakian Heavy Crew. I use this across the board for every single Czech Heavy that I have because I use the auto loaders on a lot of the tanks. I'm actually going to do a little bit of a deeper dive into the perks here and let you guys know the reason why it's set up this way. So, Born Leader, kind of a must-have. Six Cents, a must-have. Track Mechanic, a must-have. The way that I build my crews whenever I'm training new crews, Six Cents first. You want to know that you're spotted. This is one of the number one key features that will keep you alive and increase your survivability across the board. Track Mechanic, 
However fast you can get your tracks back on your tank is going to make a huge difference because it's all about survivability. If you're capable of staying alive and backing off, even if you use a toolbox on a tank, just to try and ooh, just to try and help you not get permatracked by those six second reload tanks, because you will get permatracked inside these lower tiers because of reload times and then module damage. And it's something that you really wanted to watch out for. For instance, the Skoda T45 module damage, we're looking at 119 module damage. So that might be one shot on a track, that might be two shots on a track. Thing is, once the track is broken, it is one shot to reset. Thing is, average repair time of track mechanic in a premium consumable, we're looking at about a six second timer, 5.8 reload time. You guys can make up your mind if you want to be perma tracked, or if you're going to throw a toolbox on your um, super heavies or whatever it is that you're using, as I continue to always drop stuff and knock things off my desk because that's just me. That's how it goes. It's always like that. But track mechanic is something that's nice to have because it prevents eight second reload tanks from perma tracking you. It also helps prevent you from needing to pop a, like a repair kit prematurely, depending if you know the reload of the enemy that you're going against. Um, up next, steady aim. It's kind of a perk that I'm, uh, you know, respectively hoping that they remove from the game because we don't need anything that increases the base accuracy. It's either that or lower it to 5% because 10% is quite the jump. Uh, snapshot, I use this because it's during turret rotation. 12% of accuracy during turret rotation. A lot of your auto loaders, you want to keep that tight bloom T57. Auto loaders in general, it's always nice to have that additional tighter bloom on turret rotation just to help you. It can make a difference inside of dire situations. Having this combined with steady aim, completely fine. Uh, clutch braking, faster rotation speeds, off-road driving, a perk that is actually a must-have on essentially every single tank in the game that goes above 20 or 25 or even 30. The reason why? If you're playing the same tank with a buddy and you're using off-road driving, off-road driving increases your power to weight because the terrain resistance is not affecting you as much. And it just, it makes a big difference. For instance, if there's two E5s playing together, one E5 has off-road driving, the other one doesn't, the one that has off-road driving is always going to pull away and seem faster because it's capable of actually utilizing its maximum power to weight. Uh, other than that, let's go ahead and jump into some of the equipment. So starting off, we're going to be using advanced optics because we only have 370 view range combined with situational awareness because it's all about trying to get up that view range as much as you can. Power terrain. I don't care if anyone says I pronounced it wrong. That's how I've been saying it for a very long time. Don't judge me. Power terrain. It's my way. Max speed plus 5%. Max horsepower plus 5%. Honestly, I wish that they would change this. Max speed. I wish it was a set number, like plus 4 forward, plus 2 backwards. That way, medium tanks and light tanks that go above 50, you know, they don't benefit as much from this because it's a set increase. That way, slower tanks have a bigger increase because the percentage, I think percentages are wrong. This is not an MMO. This is kind of a competitive tank shooter simulator. I wouldn't really say simulator, but it is a competitive game and percentage increases tend to play against it. Along with that crew performance plus 5%, totally fine because it's crew, 5%, whatever. However, speed-wise percentage increasing speed uh, 100 kilometers an hour plus 5% that's plus 5 kilometers while a tank that goes 20 plus 5% that's 1 kilometer you get where I'm going with this kind of something wrong also something that I do want to touch up on just a little bit it is premium consumables if you are not using a premium consumable on your tank and you're using standards well you wonder why you only have a 50% win rate or why you're only averaging 48% win rates it's because your ammo racked by artillery, set on fire by artillery, or you're getting tracked, you use it, and then you're unable to do anything the rest of the match because your gun's broken, your ammo racked, and your engine's out. Premium consumables are way too powerful, and I would like to see them readjust standard consumables. And another thing before we continue, I totally forgot about this. I don't want to miss out because this is something I really want badly. Wargaming. If you watch my videos, if you keep track of me, because you're afraid I'm going to leak super test information. Keep in mind, I've changed my opinion on that. You guys do you. I'm going to do me. However, one thing you can do to support me is give me a thousand of these. Salute to those who served. All gave some, some gave all. I absolutely love these because I respect our veterans that play the game. And I think it's absolutely amazing that these get brought in. However, I'm just sad that I don't have enough of them. Give me like a thousand of them. If you do that, guess what? I would absolutely love you guys. Because I just enjoy having them on my tanks. Literally, if you go through them all. I mean, unless it's the Passante, I kind of put tank for sale on that one. 
Uh, probably because, you know, like I just, yeah. And so while the match is loading, there's actually a couple of things I want to share with you guys on the reason why I really like the Linus. Starting off, you got 40 millimeters of top armor all across, which means that 120 is going to be bouncing off. 80 millimeters on the hatch, not too bad. 45 millimeters on the top of the hatch. 110 millimeters of armor, though, on the front allows you to really get some nice side scraping going on. Not to mention 80 millimeters on the side. Something that plays against though, 20 millimeters of under armor. 75 millimeters are going to go through this without much of an issue. They're just going to tear through you like there's no tomorrow. And also, if you overpull, keep in mind your ammo rack locations are along here. So keep that in mind whenever you're going to be playing this tank, if you do plan on playing it. Other than that, let's go ahead and jump into the gameplay here. So we are on Westfield, and we're going to be using the three-shot autoloader. Uh, more than likely, I'm kind of thinking about going K0. This is a position I really like to get to. Uh, there's a couple of light tank positions that I would like to show off on this map. And, uh, yeah... I guess whenever we do some light tank gameplay, keep in mind those videos will actually be um, recorded matches rather than live gameplay because I want to show you guys the location on those maps that I use specifically to scout out. That's They're actually not very common. So if you're going to be grinding your light tanks or even even some mediums like the Borask, even some TDs can pull it off like the G-Sword. As long as your concealment is below 250, you're capable of pulling off some of these positions without much of an issue. And here we go, a little bit of engagement here. We're going to be backing up, slowing down. There's one perfectly placed, two perfectly placed. There we go. 995 shell velocity really isn't too bad. And then the hull armor on this, even though it's 110 millimeters, it's not exactly the thickest, but the way that it's designed with the flat plate in the front, it's not a pike nose. Pike noses at this tier would be really devastating, but the way that it is put together... I don't have much of a problem with it. Not to mention the aim time on this. Actually, I don't feel bad pulling right here just because of the 40 millimeters of uh, top armor. I actually feel a bit comfortable pulling right here until artillery comes at me and I pop a repair kit a half second too early. And track, I'm kind of kicking in now. So the 40 millimeters of armor up top did allow me to kind of play a lot different right there compared to what you would normally see tanks play. Just because every single caliber over there, none of them is going to be able to overmatch the top or capable of getting the auto ricochet up top and just showing off something you don't see normally. We're going to put one into his top plate. Foul play on my end. We're going to go for the tracks if he gives us them. Ammo rack that's just as nice. However, we are on a massive reload right now. Oh. Also, the turret armor on this at 160, the way that it's designed, though, with your um, angles that you have on it, it does play to this tank's advantages heavily. 220 alpha, not bad. Artillery is just barraging the crap out of me. Thank you. I love you, artillery. We all love you. Especially since your reload rates have been increased by a crap ton. Risking a little bit of hit points to get right here, but so far up to 2,000 blocked. Not bad. Hopefully the ram pulls around that right side and gets some scouting. Thank you. Premature fire in my end. You can really feel that aim time playing against this. Doesn't make it a bad tank, though. Just means that you need to slow down a little bit. And that's why I use snapshot in these tanks. To help give them that little bit that they need. Max out gun depression right there. There was no more shots they're going to be able to land. And that Tiger is shooting APCR. So we're going to back off. I don't want to get hit by 247 premium pin. You know what? I think a better play would be to try and use the Tiger's view range against him. Let's pull over here and see if we can spot him out. We did get spotted, but with a slight delay. So we did have a little bit of an advantage, but then we lost the advantage by pulling a little bit too much. We are in a heavy, though, so concealment is not exactly what you're looking for inside heavies. Artillery's aim back at us. We're going to back off. Try and get out of the way. 
Oh, nice. Hit the ram. Not bad so far. Still a decent match. It, it can still go either or way right now. So we're going to see. What we do here. We're going to put one, two. Pop a repair kit. I got way too greedy right there. I took way too much damage. Two shots that pinned. One coming in from the side and one into the lower plate. Take a little bit slow. We're probably going to get dropped by artillery here in about two seconds. High explosives. That's fun. Aim time and accuracy playing against us right there. And more than likely the M44 is going to be reloading in 41. Yep, there it is. Extremely redonkulous reload times and low tier artilleries. Guess that's one reason why I don't see a lot of people enjoying the low tiers. Five seconds to completely clip out right here. And high artillery. I am lucky to be alive right now. The 250 heat pen that this offers, though, does make a di big, big difference in how it plays. Just because you have the penetration needed to go through most tier rates in the game. But the shell velocity does play against it just a little bit, but that's completely fine. We're going to hit one. We're going to hit a spaced armor. We're going to get taken down from the left. Do I start my reload? Nah, we're, we're going to take it. We're going to see what we do. What we have. Ammo rack. I doubt we're going to be able to get another ammo rack on him. And there is no way I'm going to be able to survive for 10 seconds against this Tiger 1. Yeah, there's no way. I mean, honestly, not a bad match. 3,086 damage dealt, 1,606 assisted, 1,995 blocked. Got to show off a couple of the characteristics of the tank. I enjoy that. That turned out really well. I mean, still, though, 6,900 gold for this tank? Come on. Nice. Not to mention the decent profit that we made off the match of 71,586 silver. Um, decent experience. Honestly, any tank has a good crew trainer as long as you feel comfortable inside of it. Uh, Metal-wise, we're looking at a first-class mastery. That would have been a one that would have been an ace tanker. High caliber, bruiser, and fire for effect. And then scoreboard for anyone who cares to see that. Honestly, it's lower tiers. There's no real point to jump in here and, you know, say anything about it. Because it is what it is. It's how it goes. And up next is the single shot. It's the freaking battle kiwi, guys. Come on. All right, so steps. This is not a bad lineup. Um, probably going to be taking left. Left seems like it would be the, the value play because right side, we're going to get caught out. We don't have enough speed. Left side, we at least have a lot of haul down areas. But we do have to keep our under armor in mind if we're going to plan on side scraping. I do like how the armor on this tank is flattened out, unlike the Germans, because the Germans really like to have their armor um, have that little bit of a slant. So whenever you're side scraping, 122s are going to pin it. But 120s and lower are going to ricochet off of it. So keep that in mind if you're versing Tiger 2s and you have a 122. You can overmatch the side armor if they are side scraping. As long as you aim just right and you find where that slant is in the armor, you can actually tell by the way the skirts look. But there is that. Alrighty, we're going to go ahead and start pulling up. Fingers crossed. Ooh, scratch that. I'm a Muppet. Look at the spawn rotation. I could have had a way better match if I would have just taken the inside. But nope, I am not paying attention at all. I just tells you guys like how much we're focusing on commentary here. Come on. Give me a little bit of prompt. Prompts. Battle Junkie. Fury. T41 E1. Love the 10 shot autoloaders. Hellcat. Super chaffy. Alright. Tier 8. Decent amount of tier 8s in the enemy team. But we have enough penetration to not really worry about it too much. Kind of don't want to pull too much right here. Holding off object 252U. I think supporting these two would probably be the best play that we can have. Maybe pulling over, doing a little bit of damage, but we're not going to want to over pull our tier 8s. Let them kind of pull up and lead the charge a little bit. And give them a little bit of support and see where we can pitch in a little bit of damage. But currently, the way this is looking, I should be able to pull. Also, anyone that um, is wondering, I enjoy having my map on the bottom right because I use the top of my screen to see what's going on. And I, I kind of feel like having more stuff that takes up the top of the screen plays against you quite a bit. So, there is that. Not exactly a big fan of it. 
Um, let's pop the premium consumable. Get some view range down there. Firefly VC. Isn't that the tech tree version? Two hundred and thirty-two in the side of the Hellcat. It's a good shot. Honestly, the nine hundred and ninety-five. Basically, we can just call it a thousand shell velocity on these rounds. Is really nice, just because they're comfortable to fire. I don't feel too bad firing these. And Hellcat ramming a two-five-two U. That looked like it worked out very well. Wow, we broke the gun and the tracks of the Super Chaffee. I don't think I've ever had a shot like that. To be able to go, like, super hyper pin the barrel and hit the tracks behind them. Have you guys ever done that? I, I'm happy I'm recording that. That was awesome. Uh, let's see right here. The, on the bottom of the screen, we have uh, something known as spotted, six cents, and detected. One way that you guys, a little bit of a tip, one way you guys can know if someone is inside these bushes here is if you're pulling out and you hit right here and then you get detected. It gives you an idea where you need to aim on who is in what bush. That will help you guys kind of try and find passes of scouters and basically no one that's doing anything really passive inside the game that is just spotting you out and causing you a lot of trouble. Gonna be damaged. That was a double landing. That is nice. It combines the numbers whenever it hits like that. Light tank that didn't want to move. A Linux. Decent armor, 80 millimeters. Good block. Not a whole lot of block damage this match though. I enjoy it whenever I actually get to show off the armor on these tanks, especially if they're heavies. If they're heavies, I love being able to show off the armor. Alrighty. Taking it nice and slow. No point in rushing inside here. 252U and the AT-15. What do we got? T-41E1. We're actually going to stick back and make sure that this AT-15 doesn't get rushed improperly. Might want to try and pull on the T-41E1, but we want to stay with inside the uh, gun view of the AT-15. Taking a hard left, maybe going up the hill a little bit. Premium consumable, let's get that enhanced view range. There we go. We're going to take a hard left on top of this ridge. This will be the good ridge to go up to. Oh, here I am. That was a little bit of a late shot on my part. I wonder how... That Defender's holding up. Uh, Tiger 1, Panther 88. So, Defender should be fine on his own. Because that might be the, um... That's the T-34-88 that he's up against. He'll be completely fine. Light Tank is pulling back out. Definitely be careful, though, because it is a 10-shot autoloader. With a really gnarly amount of damage, so do want to play a little bit careful. I don't want to give him too much of play against me, so we're going to pull inside the rocks here. Unless he's going to go mid. If he goes mid, we'll be able to pull over because we got a beach party. You already know he's got disco music playing inside of his tank. And my PC is telling me that there's new drivers available for download. Hooray! It's always fun to have pop up. Makes makes me jump because I wasn't expecting it to. So for anyone wondering, I freaking jumped a mile high. Oh, that surprised me. On T41E1. Hey, there you go. It's kind of funny. I remember when they released that tank. Um, they broke the mark of excellence system, and after my first match ever inside that tank, I three marked it and gold marked it. I was <laughs> I was extremely confused for the longest time because of that. We're gonna stay in the open here. Actually, we're gonna do a little bit of a cover me shout out. Hopefully, someone will uh get that and pull to help cover. Not playing super well against the T3488. If he was in the 85, he'd be a lot scarier, but the 88 is not as scary as the 85. Just because that uh, 85's got way better pin. Alright, we're probably going to pull on nothing. We're just going to get absolutely pounded by uh, premium rounds from T3488. 
engine is out. We're going to try and maintain a decent angle. All right, not bad. Um, armor did not work out too well. Then again, I did kind of pull up into rocks against uh, two mediums that have got mobility on me. So foul play on my end. Other than that, two kills, 2,554 damage. Did, uh, did I rely on premium that much? I don't think I shot any premium. Not bad. Uh, second class mastery. Not bad. Sniper, bruiser, confederate. I think we'll do one more match inside this, maybe with the uh, three-shot autoloader. So another reason why I'm choosing a tier 7 today is because tier 7 matchmaking as of right now is some of the best matchmaking that you can get. You're not going to end up against tier 10s. Um, not just that, tier 9s are actually not as popular as tier 10s and tier 8s. So majority of the time, some of the worst matchmaking that you're going to see, and we're talking maybe 80% of the time, the worst matchmaking that you will experience is against tier 8s. But even then, most tier 7s have got enough penetration to handle tier 8s in front row combat if you play them correctly. Um, tier 9 is just... It surprises me that tier 9 is not as popular in console as it is in PC. A lot of people in PC actually prefer to main tier 9 just because you're capable of going up against tier 7s. They go against tier 8. It's kind of that perfect middle ground of like matchmaking against 10s and everything else. But tier 7 on console right now kind of seems like the sweet spot. So... If you guys are struggling with your matches and you're trying to grind silver, you know what? Maybe a tier to try out would be tier 8. That's my recommendation. And uh, just get in, give it a go, see if you guys enjoy it. And seriously, Wargaming, I want more of this freaking um, inscription so you have no idea how badly I want them. They would make me so happy. And no need to fear of Wargaming. I am not doing anything super test related, even though I've had like a crap ton of information dropped on me the past week. I'm not going to share any of it. Out of respect, I know that you guys are trying your hardest to do things, and you've done a lot of good in the past. And honestly, I've not really given you guys much of the benefit of the doubt in a few things. Uh, we took a shot from the right, from the Absolution. We're going to take him on. He does have a decent pin. 221, I believe. is going to tear through our top armor because he's loading nothing but premium, but five seconds is all I need to ruin your day. Back to the garage you go. Ooh, T-37 is lucky. Oh, I'm lucky. That's a dreadnought. He did not pull me. That would have been bad. Uh... Put quite a few matches inside this tank today. I'm enjoying it. I actually really like this tank. Super chaffy. Dreadnought. Gotta watch out for him because he can overmatch our top. Uh oh. Uh oh. Ah, uh, that's a heat round. Wow. Why do they always shoot heat? Oh, the pain. Uh, it's a lot better than getting pinned by an HE. I am by myself in this flank. This is not gonna go good. Oh, no, it's not. He's going to pull and put another heat round straight through us. And our effective armor is only like 248 against a uh, 250 heat pin. So I guess that is what it is. Uh, I see lower matchmaking. Uh, they don't like this flank, apparently. That's nice to know. Other than that, you guys, um, just know the Linus. I, I actually do find myself enjoying playing inside Tier 7 matchmaking right now. Um, tomorrow, I have absolutely no idea what to do what tank to cover, but I do know this, the Battle Kiwi flags, I'm going to use to represent tanks that I've done this with. That way I don't lose track and I'm sitting there like, oh, we're going to do it again. Uh, maybe. <laughs> I mean, who knows? We'll probably do it later down in the future. Um, other than that, you guys, thank you for tuning in. Thanks for dropping, you know, bye. Um, one of the best things you can do to help out the channel though, leave a like. And if another video pops up inside the recommendation at the end of this one, you know, take what just I, I think they do it naturally inside of any video, tap in one of mine. It helps boost the algorithm. It helps me get me out there. I'm not saying that I want to be greedy or that I want more followers, but what I am saying is this: there's a lot of misinformation out there, and my goal is, is to try and get you guys some of the best information that I can. I spend a lot of time reading and researching the game for crying out loud. I've spent countless hours just going over old forum postings and countless hours super testing myself inside this game because there's a lot of problems and a lot of things going on. The best thing that we can do is kind of come together and have a little bit of a collective thing to where 
If you guys have a question you need answered, if there's something that you're looking for, a recommendation, or even if you're just someone who just wants to have a few matches and chit-chat for a minute because you're having a bad day. It is what it is, but sometimes it happens, and who knows? I might team up with you a little bit. Other than that, you guys, thank you for dropping by. Thank you for watching this all the way through. And um, hopefully I don't pull a Muppet move and I leave it stuck on the desktop for 10 minutes as I'm commentating over a match because I'm the biggest Muppet that there is inside the entire game. Um, that There is no one greater than me on the Muppetry. Because for crying out loud, I mean, I'm sitting here with this dual layout and I should have known because it's in my face. Like, literally, the monitors sink right here. And here I am, like... <gasps> Oops. <laughs> Other than that, thank you guys for dropping by. I'll see you in the next one. Any recommendations, please leave them down inside the comment section. Helps out a lot, because I have no idea what to do right now.